Hey guys, um, it's time for me to talk about quality and how you get there. When it comes to working with clay, as I said in my video when I was working with the stamps, that it can be a very frustrating experience. As you're working with the clay and you're drawing a line and it leaves a lot of extra debris, that's the word that I end up using a lot, it's just all that extra junk where you're like, I didn't want that to be there, and then you go and you try to wipe it away and you rub it right into the grooves and it's super frustrating. And so I'll talk a little bit about how you can get past that because really, um, as you take a look at all these different artists and we go through and take notes on artists, the quality that a person can bring clay is unbelievable. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to work for it. And so let me show you a little bit. Um, it's going to give you a few tips. So for one, I'm working with clay that is in that leather hard stage. And so that just means it has gotten pretty firm. I can't change the shape of this or the form of it really much at all or it's just going to break on me. I've let it dry quite a bit. It's very cold. The thing in the video where I put it up, my che up to my cheek, it's extremely cold. And it's, it's firm. So um, the leather hard designation, it feels like leather. It has like a smooth, solid surface, but it is still movable a little bit. And so um, with my finger, I'm able to smooth things out a little bit. Now, how do you deal with the design? Well, it's good to maybe try putting it in there when the clay is still soft but you really want to wait till it's at that leather hard stage to have a lot of, um, I was going to say luck, but it's not luck because you're planning it out ahead of time. And so when I was putting these lines in, they were there, but they didn't look that great. And so what I had to do is I had to go and draw them in again, being careful to make sure that I was trying to do them. If I want them straight, I'm doing them straight. If they're curved, I want them curved, whatever. But I'm doing it now. It's going to build up on the end of this little tool. Now you can use other tools as well, even a pencil, uh, if you say, hey, I have my wood stick and it's, it's no longer sharp, I mean, you can use a toothpick, you could use a pen that you don't want to use anymore. Now, when I'm doing this, it's creating that debris again. It's like that's what I'm trying to get rid of. And so one thing you can do is do it in collaboration with a dry paintbrush. And so you got this nice paintbrush in there. So since the clay is leather hard, as I go in here, I should be able to sweep it right out of there. Now, if you try to do it any other way, you could have some problems. If I try to do it with my finger and wipe it out of there, I might smush stuff down into the line. It didn't help me at all. Um, if I try to blow it out, you don't know what kind of clay dust you already have sitting on the table, so that can be bad. So really the brush is a good method. I can even turn it sideways and I can get in there. Now if it's damaging the clay by using that paintbrush, that means your clay is pretty soft. It shouldn't damage the clay. And so it's a way to clear out any of that stuff. So whenever you have something that's like, okay, it's, you know, I made a design, but it's pretty lame. Um, I could go in and try to put these lines in and try to do a neater job, but when I do it, I'm going a little bit more sure of myself here. Now, if I have an area that's like, oh, it's really terrible, I could I always try to rub it out completely. Um, th sometimes your fingers and thumbs are the best tools you can have because I can vary how much pressure I'm putting in on it, so I'm just smoothing it out completely because when I did it early on, I did it with a comb. And I'm not going to be able to do a good job with the comb. So I might say, I kind of like that idea, but the end product didn't really show that I did a great job. And so now I'm, I'm able to go through and draw it in there maybe more carefully now. And sometimes you may get the thing where like right there, I'm, I'm doing really deep. And then because the clay is getting so dry, it might crack and break off. And so um, it's just a matter of like losing water. And so if I have a little bit of water in that little tiny spot, if it was cracking, coming apart there, I could put that in there and I'm going to want to come back to that a little bit, but I can kind of clear it out a little. And then later on, just check to make sure that, that it's going to, going to be all right. Cause it'll dry together and should be okay. So use the tool in tandem with the brush, a dry brush. If you have a wet brush, it's going to give you a whole different effect. Um, I also want to talk about sponges. Sponges are great for the surfaces themselves. And so when I had like a rough surface here where it's like I tried to smooth it out and it just, I kept making a mess out of it. I wait till it gets to the leather state, leather hard stage. I could try out the yellow sponge. What you're going to see is it's going to act a little bit like sandpaper. Now, what I did is I got a little bit of water on here, but clearly if I squeeze it, no water comes out. It's not like it's full of water. It's a little bit damp. That works really good for think of like erasing or sanding down any of those spots that I want to go away. You also have, um, you might have, I, I can't guarantee that everyone has one of the little makeup sponges. It's a very soft sponge and you might even have it with no water. It's very soft or you could add a touch of water, but it's a way to go along and deal with surfaces 
and you're just rubbing them smooth. And so as you're doing your work, there's like step one of like getting your design on there. Like when I was doing that flower one, it's like, okay, I got it started, but you don't stop there. You don't stop there if, if you're trying to do a good job, you're trying to like make it look good. So I might get to the stage and say, you know what? Every time I seem to touch it, it gets worse. And so I'm gonna let it get to leather hard stage. It is still dark gray. It is that very cold feel. And it's not very movable. And so now I can come in with different tools. I like using things that have a point, like using this little dowel, sharpened dowel or pencil, something like that, to get it going. And the same thing's gonna happen. Like as I carve things away, likely I'm gonna leave that extra debris where I don't want it. Like it's like, oh, I didn't actually want it right there. Oh no. Well, you could try just sweeping it away every once in a while and just get rid of any of that stuff that happens to be in there. So as you're doing that, you're just trying to clean it up and make it look better. You might do things like, oh, I wanted that curve to be better. What if I use the inside of this brush? Um, what if I took the sponge? And so I am not done with this one. I clearly have more to do on it by just letting you know, like I'm gonna take the time after it's done some drying, gets to the leather hard stage, and then I'm gonna really, really polish it up, so to speak. Just really look at those, those little things. And here's the thing, we're starting with an extremely, really small assignment and the one we do next is even in, in many ways smaller than this and it's a great way to start because you start learning how to look for little details because once you go larger sometimes people forget about that and they only focus on the large forms and then they don't pay enough attention to those little details so i hope this helps and uh, just understand it takes time it takes a lot of patience and it takes a willingness to get it right so good luck to you all right quick update since i ended that video I went back to the flower one and I've been reworking it, um, but I want to show you, I've been using this tool a lot, so I was using the point of it, I was using the point to get in there and, you know, work with scraping stuff out and have the sharp areas be sharp, but I also was using the back side of this, which was great for pulling out areas, and you'll, a, a big part of using tools you've never used before is that you experiment, you try it and go, no, that doesn't seem to be doing what I want, and then eventually you're like, oh, I think I got the hang of like when I'm doing a certain thing with it, it's doing something a little different. And so trying that out, I also used the brush, of course, to clear out all the extra debris, but I also used like the rounded end. I wanted to have some areas where it wasn't pointy. So when I was coming in here and doing that, I was using that. And then I was, of course, I was using the, the brush that's a little bit wet to kind of smooth out things at the end. And then I could also try um, this one, which is kind of good for like, if it's really soft still, or you want just a tiny bit of a change, this one definitely does more quicker. And so when you're doing this, you just get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm happy with it. So go at it.